Okay, so let's just talk about in general, problem number two on the test, a loading and unloading problem on the test. Now, I say loading and unloading, but I, I could give you some other questions about this. Uh, for example, hey, I was finding the normal strain. That had nothing to do with the loading and unloading. I didn't reuse this all right here, but I just wanted to throw that in there. Uh, for normal problems, um, if this was normal uh, stress and normal strain, I might ask, hey, what's the modulus of elasticity, right? What's the slope right here? What is the modulus of resilience? That's a strain energy density under uh, the elastic region. What's the modulus of toughness? That's the area under the whole, whoops, the under the whole curve. Um, what is the fracture stress, the yield stress? What regions are these? Let's just say this is the elastic region and the um, yielding region, we'll say right there. So, so anyway, I say it's loading and unloading, but it could be a number of other problems. Now, this one was shear, um, but I could give you normal, okay? Also, this one kind of gave you the strain right here, and so we, we came up from here and found the stress. I could give you a problem that, that kind of gives you the stress, so you have to kind of come up from here and calculate the strain. So, so don't be alarmed if you know this value and you're asked to find this value. Um, <clears throat> another thing to, to, to kind of uh, caution you about for normal, remember that this axis right here is strain. This axis right here is unitless. This axis right here is delta L over L. So be careful if for a normal problem I'm uh, asking for the final length, you know, the permanent deformation in length. You know, you might have to take your strain, multiply it times L. Let's kind of chat about this. If you've got a strain, the, the, the figure is giving you the strain, <clears throat> sorry, the um, diagram, the stress-strain diagram, is giving you the strain, but if you want an actual length, millimeters or inches, then you've got to take the strain times the original length to get your delta L. All right, you got to take your strain times your original length if you want actual units, if you want your answer in inches or millimeters. Also, be careful, am I asking for a delta L? You know, I'm asking for an elongation, I'm asking for a change in length, or am I asking for the total length? So be careful, you know, I might be asking for the original length plus the delta L. So a few things for a normal problem, normal stress, normal strain problem, that um, to, to be aware of, answer what I'm asking for, asking for um, and be careful with your units, you know, be careful with your units. Um, and I'm asking for inches, or just I'm asking for a unitless strain in inches per inches. Uh, you don't have to worry too much about that because this is this is in radians, and you don't have to multiply it times an, an L or delta L or anything. I, I can't ask you any more than finding the elastic recovery and the elastic or the um, permanent set uh, in radians. Uh, so uh, this, is, this, is, this is a tough a tough one. You know, it might be a long problem. Um, there's a lot of stuff I could ask for. And it's been a while since we've done this. Uh, go back to the test one. Go back to test one review. Go back to the in-class problems and the homework problems. You've got a lot that you can go back to to um, prepare for the test. Try to think ahead about what, what, where you think you're going to get stumped. Where you think you're gonna get, um, you know, stuck, and try to anticipate those, work those out beforehand, before you get to the, to the final exam. All right.